Your reason why your life is not at the level that you want to be, because you're not serving. And when you serve, you serve with the wrong motives. When people were on the stage at the House of Hope, Pablo, looking down at the homeless people, I was out there with the homeless people. And I was hugging them. I don't care what you smelt like. Bed bucks and all, I'm going to hug you. I'm going to love on you. I'm going to make you feel how you need to be. I'm going to speak life into you because God spoke life into me. When people almost lost their mind in the shelter because they didn't get the things that they were supposed to get. Housing, food stamps. Come here, bring it in. I know it's a tough day, Antoine. Come here, I got you. I would have conversations with these people and the whole time, I didn't even know that God was developing the gift. I didn't even know the first time I was 25 years old, walked into a room with, with 45 grown men, 35, 45, 55, 65. At the age of 25, I didn't even know that the Lord was using me and preparing me for where I'm about to go. I walked in there, uh, hands, palms, sweaty. Shirt feel like Kobe Bryant in the fourth quarter with 30 seconds. I walked in there and I said, I'm gonna give him what God gave me. And I spoke life and I didn't even know there was two people in the back that were about to leave the program and OD, Kev. I didn't even know it, John. I just got up there and let the Lord use me. In other words, shout out to King David. In other words, God puts anointed things in filthy places. See, see, you, 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 you think you anointed because you got a Chanel bag on. You think you anointed. You, here's the thing. You got a towel with no dirt. You ain't served yet. <laughs> and the more that I started serving, the more I started becoming elevated. You got to stop exalting yourself and let God do the exalting. And so I'm not here today under my own power. I'm here today for the work that I did when nobody was paying attention to the work that I was doing. <laughs> like, 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 like God was watching me, y'all. He would watch me and there'll be a bunch of highlighters at the desk, right, Pablo? Highlighters, printing paper, everything. And I would see some of my employees take it home. I'd be like, do you not know that God's watching you? God see you. pick a boo. He see you. You want God to elevate you and you still in a highlighter? A paper clip? It seems small to you, but it's big to God because how you treat somebody else's property determines on how God's going to level and trust you with your own. That's why God hasn't given you a new car because you don't treat the car that you have as if it's a new car. That's why your account leaning sideways on grace. Every single Sunday you come into the altar, Oh, come to the altar. And you singing and you singing and you wonder why God is not doing nothing for you. Because you are not being faithful over the few. I was faithful over one homeless person. I was faithful over two recovering drug addicts. And now look at me. God says, son, because you was faithful over the one and faithful over the two, let me show you what it looks like to do what you always wanted to do from the very beginning. When you came to the church, when you was back of the church with the black and white cardigan and the tan pants, and you felt like God didn't care about you no more, and you felt like God was done with you, and you felt like God threw you away, and you felt like God didn't want anything to have anything to do with you, and that lady called you up on the altar, and she said to you, stop the mid-worship and said, you are going to change the world, and your home is the kingdom of heaven forever. That's the moment that I said, God, I will serve you for the rest of my life. When you give God your true yes, you get everything that comes with it. And so if you don't get anything from tonight, stop chasing what's already yours. Your faith is weak. Stop running after what's already yours. Your faith is weak. Stop chasing the money. You keep working 100 hours, wonder why there's a, a hole in your pocket. What's wrong with you? God's like, son, daughter, you do not understand. Like, when my kids come with me, Kev, 
And John, whatever they want in the refrigerator, it's yours. You don't even have to ask me. Your faith has been unwavering. You got to get around some people that's going to sharpen your faith. Because the Bible says iron sharpens iron. So does a good friend sharpen another. And the reason why you're not being sharp is because you're around plastic. And so tonight, yo, I just want you to understand that God is calling you to get out of the boat and God is calling you to come deeper. And God is calling you to say, I don't care what's going on in your life, the relationship, the kids, the, 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 the custody battle. God's like, I don't care what's going on, your job, your boss. Like, I don't care what the winds are saying. I don't care what the current is saying. I don't care how the boat is rocking back and forth. What I just want you to understand is keep your eyes on me, queen. Keep your eyes on me, king. Everything that you want, everything that you're looking to be, everything that you're looking to become, whatever it is that your hand find to do, whatever it is that I put inside of you, all I'm telling you is just to have. And trust me, that everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. God is good. Come on, God is good. Come on, somebody. God is good.